I believe I believe we all know that snails um, do not joke with calcium. So, and I'll show you um, an evidence of that. So, we infuse um, oyster shells, the oyster shells that have been um, and broken down to powder. Yeah. So, we, we sieve it to make sure that the sharp chippings are out. And then we sprinkle the... This is one of the secrets I should I should be teaching the people. <laughs> oh <my> <laughs> <laughs> so, but but today you are getting it for free. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm here with Samuel. We are currently in the snow farm. Uh, he's here to teach us some of the things you're supposed to know. Start your own snow farm. Certain things that would be helpful in you out there who want to start your own snow farm. If you're already in a snow farming business and it's failing, some of the information that would help you to start your own snow farm. Spare me some few minutes of your time to acknowledge today's sponsors. This video is sponsored by Chundalan Run Farms. So they have an online shop where you can get to purchase whatever you need in your home in your household every product that you need can be found on their website so um you can visit their website tundalandrunfarms.com they have a category various categories for the various products that you can purchase on their website they've categorized them from beverages to chicken to vegetables whatever you need can be found on their website just create an account get yourself the online cut and make orders for whatever that you need this is for people those living in nigeria so wherever you are in nigeria you can quickly visit their website, have the online cart, order whatever you need, and it will be delivered to you wherever you are in Nigeria. I mean, we are in the digital world now, so whatever you need, you don't have to go outside to go and purchase some of the things that you might need for yourself. You can just go to their website, studielandrunfarms.com, place your orders, and it will be delivered to you wherever you are. So yeah, they even have the option of making the order um, through WhatsApp on their platform. So just go to their website and check it out. You can order easily on your whatsapp purchase whatever you need and on their website too there you can see the pictures of the product you are buying and their various price tags so you know the cost you'll be um, incurring in purchasing those products so yeah every detailed information will be in the description side the link will be there go there check it out visit their website and get yourself any of the product that you want these are for people in nigeria so to all my nigerian viewers if you need any products for yourself you can visit their website tundalandrunfarms.com and get yourself some too bye so yeah, without much ado, let's get into the video. So yeah, Samo, as you are here, kindly take us through. First, let's start with, um, if someone watching us is inspired want to start his own snow farm, mm -hmm. looking at prospecting to the snow farm in business, how can the person go about it? How can the person start? Okay, so once again, you are welcome to a degree farm uh, in Eastern region. Um, the snow farming is, is interesting. I think that farming in general is, is, is interesting. But uh, when it comes to snail, um, there are a couple of things to look out for. Okay. Um, snails are delicate. And so, um, um, aside, aside the fact that um, snails can multiply um, very fast without even mating, um, there are things that if you do not put in place, it would not survive. I have been in seminars and uh, meetings where I've, I've met people who have um, uh, had snails laying about a million eggs and then they wow. lose all of it, yes, in the shortest possible time. So um, it is important to, to know the very important things that, that's, that help the survival of the snow farm. Gotcha. Mm. Okay. The way you mention of something I want to ask, say so they can multiply without even meeting. Yes. How is that possible? So, I, I believe that a lot of a lot of people interested in snail farm already know that snails are what we call hermaphrodite. Yeah. So the one snail, I, I think I think uh, snail farming is the, is the only um, animal animal farming that 
uh, you can start with just one, one. one unit yeah. of it. So you can have just one snail and it will meet with itself and give you X. Interesting. So that, that, that is, that is the beautiful thing about snail farming. So, um, you can start with, um, two snails. And the, the cool part about snail farming is that, um, a single snail, that is the, the African giant snail, also known as in Wapa, Akatina, Akatina. Yeah. One snail can give you about 600 eggs in one, um, one day. In one day? Yes. I've had, I've had an experience here where one snail gave us about 620 eggs. Wow. Yes. So if you have just two snails and then, um, both of them are giving you, um, let's say averagely 300 twice a year, that's 1200 X. If you, uh, do your minus and plus and then you subtract about 20% of mortality, mortality yeah. from the 1200, you know that you still left with a good mm -hmm. amount of, of snails. I mean, this brought so much let people know that yes, snow farming is like it's very lucrative because this one can leave quite six hundred eggs. Yes, that, that's serious. Yes, so even even in some countries, um, snails are marked as as pests. They are they are marked as as uh, dangerous animals because when if they, they a lot. right if they if they if they find a place where they are very much comfortable, they will multiply very fast and and they can uh, damage um, a whole vegetation. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the lizards are trying to get into yeah, there because we have the the pens open. Okay, okay. One other thing, John, I don't want to find out. So, looking at the structure, mm. people have the idea that um, for snow farming to really try, um, they would prefer the greenhouse type to like doing it um, this way or like like who we'll normally have the perception that the greenhouse. It's a, b a better approach to going about uh, snow farming. What do you think about it? Um, I think that I've, I've come across a lot of those content on, on YouTube. Um, I've, I've met the, the popular snow farmer on YouTube, uh, the Kess. Okay. Yes, I've, I've, I've met him in Ghana and, uh, I've had a conversation with him on, on WhatsApp. And, um, I think he's one of the people who, um, brought out that, that way of farming. Okay. Uh, where they, they do this open space and, but you know, all, all these, all these methods of, of uh, snow farming come with, um, a, a, a certain consequences. So if you do the open space, you cannot have that intimate relationship with, with your snails. You would want to be able to come to your farm, check the area in which they are, uh, know which infestation is, is happening, yeah. know if there are some new breed of ants, um, know if termites are finding their way onto the farm through a certain means you know you'd want to find all those things you'd want to be able to select snails that are not doing so so well i mean when it comes to their health yeah. uh, from the healthy ones and if you if you, them out, right yeah. so if you have an open space uh one and uh, that looks like the, the the greenhouse thing you would realize that you cannot have that relationship and sometimes even if even when you walk through the farm, you might end up killing your snails. Yeah, so most of them, right. Step on some. Right. Stuff. Even, even the, the blocks that you put there to walk on, some of them, they dig into the soil and find themselves under those things. So you can walk over them and kill them. Yeah. So for me, I feel this, this is the, um, the, the most advisable approach to, approach to, 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 to snail farming. So I can have that, uh, relationship with, with the snails. Okay, so I want, I want to also find out, like, aside this form of structure in a greenhouse, what mm. are some of the other approaches that people can go about? With? Oh, so I've seen people do it in different ways. People would put a tie and put some small soil and put the snails in there. Um, you can also do the, 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 the wood. There are people who can uh, build a box, the box system. Okay. And then, uh, they'll put soil in it and put the snails in it. But, See, like, like I said earlier, all those ones come with consequences. So the wood, for instance, if you want it to go beyond one year, you need a very strong wood, something like Odum. And you know how scarce Odum is right now. Yeah. And very expensive. expensive. Yeah, buying it. Because the truth of the matter is you have to water the snails daily or sometimes three times in a week, four times in a week. Now you can imagine putting uh, 
consistent water or wood, what happens? It becomes weak and it it breaks. Yeah. So if you if you invest in in the in the box system, you have to be changing your your wood all the time. Right. So that that is that is the cons of of the of of, of that, that 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 type of um, approach of approach, method yes. of going yeah. about. It. So yes, I think someone asked me a question some time back that. Can they do slow in the sketching and stuff? So you can go about some of these approaches, but maybe on a very large scale, um, a commercial business, to right? Do, right. It's better to have some of these structures. Right. So if you are if you are doing it in your house for your own, um, your own enjoyment, then you, you, I mean, you can go by these approaches. Yeah. But if you want to do it commercially and make money out of it, make sure they multiply. Yeah. And then you want to make sure that. You speak to the people who have been into it and seen the pros and cons of it, and then yeah, we'll give yeah. you the, the best advice. Okay, okay. So, looking at you're talking about structures and stuff, someone may be watching us want to know how much it will cost to have a setup like this. Um, can you give an estimate how much it costs building something like this when you're putting it up? Um, so let me let me start let me start by saying that if you if you look take a, a closer look at, at, at the farm. You would realize that we put the farm here strategically. Okay. If you look around you, you see that this is a forest zone. Okay. If you look around you, you see that there are mountains around. Yeah. If you look around you, you realize that the humidity here is 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 at the top. Um, we also brought it to a place where um we can easily get their feeding. Now um saying all this so that you understand the the amount of money that goes into something like this okay um i checked the internet when i was starting um i looked at um how people had built theirs i compared it to um, um what the books were also telling me and i also went uh, for a training with a center for scientific research oh. Uh, I have other certificates from them in snow farming. Um, and the truth of the matter is you will not get everything from, from the book. You will not get everything from the videos you on YouTube. Right. You will not get everything from even the, the training you go to. So you'd want to speak to somebody who has put money into it. Now, if you, if you look at our system, you realize that, no, let me first say that what most, most of the other farmers, they build each pen separately. So these, these are 10. It, on one block. One block, okay. But when you go to selling farms, you see that they build one pen separately. From each other. Yes, from each other. And then you realize that with ours, we share a wall in the middle. Okay. okay. So you realize that we are, we are saving money by sharing, uh, the wall with, I mean, they're sharing walls with each other. We didn't separate them. If not, you would have so much blocks go into, into, the into one. Work, okay. So, um, Depending on how, how you want to start. And then the fact that snails multiply very fast. Um, at the time we, we, we built these, uh, one block. I think that, uh, one block that is 10 pence cost us about, uh, I think, I think it cost us about 3000 to put just the, 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 the thing up with the wood and the, and the, the, the trap doors on top of them. Okay. Before you come and look at the roofing. Mm. But the, the shading is very important. Yes, the shading is very important for snails. They don't like sunlight. They like humidity. Okay. Mm. Okay. So I guess building of the block was like 3,000. So maybe adding the shade and mm -hmm. everything. And so it was like, like 4,000 to do. Um, so I think, I think, we, I think if you look about 5,000. If you, yes, if you want to add good shade, even if you look at the shade, you realize that we infused the things in, in the, in the forest, like bamboo. You can see a lot of bamboo, bamboo, sticks bamboo work here. So if you don't do that, then you, you end up putting a lot of money. Yes. Nice. So somebody who is going uh, strictly into uh, buying wood from, uh, from the streets would obviously spend more. Yeah. Yes. Mm. And you see, you can see some of the things we have gotten from the farm mm -hmm. and the woodwork and stuff. Yeah. So um, it will be less expensive to do that. Mm -hmm. So 
let's look at the structure more. You can see the spacing for um, around the main cage. Like, what's the rationale behind that? Okay, so um, we did that purposely because of ants. So a lot of people lose their snail farm because ants are infesting it. So we look at uh, seasons where the ants are out in search of food. Mm. And then we fill these gutters with water so that the ants are not able to cross onto the, into the pens. Because the secret is that we put food into the pens. Uh, so obviously the ants will also want to come and get their share, the but in the process of doing that, they kill the, the ants. They, sorry, they kill the, the snails. So we, that's why we put this, these gutters there to uh, save the snails from, from the threat of ants. Okay. So looking at the threats that, um, comes with, um, snails, yeah. I also heard like doing even a snail farm, um, is prone to snakes yes. and other reptiles mm. around. How true is that? And how do you prevent some of these things? Okay, so um, they they do not like um, even house flies. I threat to them. So uh, things like snake and lizards, they are a big threat to them. So if you if you pay close attention, you realize that since we have the cages the, pen, the cages yeah, open, there there, some, lizards. some lizards are are trying to go into the pen. So they they are huge uh, threat to 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 snails. They swallow the the young snails and then the eggs of 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 the snails. So they are they are a huge threat. If, if you're getting somebody to build your pen, you need, um, uh, the person to do proper measurement in such a way that the spacing around the pen does not allow, um, these reptiles to go into it. Even toads, toads and frogs would oh. also want to swallow the, the eggs. The eggs. Yes. So, and then if you still have spacing, maybe you want to put some foam, um, to, to close the gaps around. But, um, I also wanted to add that, um, there's this, um uh, thought that i mean there are a lot of people who have this system now but the people are debating on whether to um to plaster the the beneath of the pen okay or to leave it open um so my experience here is that sometimes when you leave the the floor open you know ants travel beneath the the soil yeah. so sometimes they travel from elsewhere and then end up finding the pen. Way, pen okay yeah i get you yes so like under the soil. So they will travel from elsewhere and come and appear under the under the pens, and then they will still infest your uh, your 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 pens, and then eventually you wouldn't want to put some uh, chemicals there, which will also harm the snails. So for us, the system we use is to plaster beneath it, and then make sure we put enough soil so that the snails can uh, burrow. Like burying themselves. Yes, yes. The so that they'll be able to bury themselves in the soil and, and enjoy them their, their space and feel like they're still in the Okay, so now let's look at um, feeding of the snails. I know um, there are some people who go and buy like the actual feed that we buy, like we buy feed for poultry and stuff for the uh, uh, snails. And some also feed them with poor and some other mm. things. Um, how do you go about the feeding? What type of feed do you use and how beneficial is this to your snail? Okay, so again, uh, I, I go back to location. So if you look around us, you realize that I'm, I'm in a place um, surrounded by poor. So before we came here, we wanted to find out um, what food snails love. Snails love popo. So we wanted a place where, because of cost, we can get a lot of popo, if not for free, at a, at a minimum cost, yeah. right? So that's why we chose here. So um, snails are, are animals that um, they eat a lot sometimes. So if you do not um, um, find cost-effective uh, feed for them, you would struggle as a commercial farmer. Especially when your farm is very huge. So snails love, uh, anything around, uh, pawpaw and its leaves. They like, uh, contumbri, they like boko boko, they like oranges, they like plantain. Orange is the main orange itself. Or? Yes, the orange itself. They like, when it comes to orange, they like the ripe orange. When it comes to pawpaw, they don't like the ripe pawpaw. They will eat it when they are hungry, but they prefer the unripe pawpaw. 
so oranges they like the ripe oranges because obviously the acid the acid content in the ripe one is is lesser compared to the unripe orange okay. um they like cassava leaves uh they like a, a, num a number of things uh, that you can you can google and and, and find yeah, it fine. so they're not they're not hard to to feed however another secret is that we do not give snails one feed at a time why so i'll i'll show you pictures of of how sometimes we feed them so what what i what i describe this is uh, as is that you need to give your snails a buffet <laughs> yes and, okay and you I will, I will show you pictures to it um so just like humans there are days where you want to eat for food there are days you want to eat kinky there are days you want to eat rice and sometimes you feel you're eating rice the whole of last week so today you want to do yam it's the same thing with snails and you need to remember that you have about 200 snails in one pen okay now all those 200 snails are not interested in popo they're not all interested in watermelons so you need to give them a buffet you need to give them some amount of oranges some amount of pawpaw some amount of leaves some amount of plantains some amount of that and then when you come uh, um, during their feeding period you realize that there are some of them who have moved towards the watermelon sometimes you come and then the whole the whole pack of, of snails are feasting on the watermelon yeah, okay. they leave everything else they all they all feast on the cabbage and forget the cucumbers you put in there so it's important to, to mix their, their feet with other things. So they have varieties to choose. Yes, from. yes. Um, aside that, you, what we also um, infuse in their feeding is, um, uh, I, I believe I believe we all know that snails um, do not joke with calcium. So, and I'll show you um, an evidence of that. So we infuse um, oyster shells, the oyster shells that has been um, uh, broken down to powder. Yeah. So we we sieve it to make sure that the sharp chippings are out, and then we sprinkle the. This is one of the secrets I should I should be teaching the people. <laughs> <laughs> so, but but today you are getting it for free. Oh, yeah, yeah. So, mean, most of them, most people will contact you. Poor right. ones still have a practical experience right, right. about it. So then, so so after after we have set up their feeding around four p.m., three p.m. to four p.m., we sprinkle this powder on their feeding, so that. Whether you like it or not, you have a little piece of calcium. Eventually, they are forced to eat it. Um, we also have this uh, improvised feeding where um, we we came up ourselves as as snail farmers, where we add um, uh, condo and uh, granite cake and uh, palm kernel, uh, a whole lot of things that we put together and then and then give them um, uh, a very healthy feeding. Okay. We, we do that because these have most of the nutrients that snails need. You know, uh, maybe cabbage will have a certain nutrient, and then uh, uh, papaw will have a certain nutrient, contumbre will have a certain nutrient, and then they might not have all of it in one day. But if you mix that for them, they have it all in one day. So that is something we infuse, especially when we realize that some of them are not doing too well, they are, they are unhealthy, and then we need to make sure they, they get healthy. So we, we provide them with all those nutrients. nutrients. Yes. For animals that move very slow, they seem to enjoy a lot. <laughs> <laughs> have have a buffet of food uh, varieties, different yeah. nutrients. For you, the slow moving animals, they, they enjoy like that. Well, um, and they are not 10 animals, so it mm -hmm. makes sense. Yes. So you, when you're talking about the feeding, no mention of the purple, the mm. orange. So I want to find out. So that's the, the purple. You open to get the actual fruit. You peel it or an orange to the actual fruit in there or just leave it. How do you, how is it? Okay, so orange, for instance, um, the snails love it so much to the extent that you don't have to do a lot of work. You just get the ripe um, oranges, cut them into two okay. in such a way that you have it this way and you just put it's it in there. Yeah, and then they would eat, they would eat the juice and eat the fiber. And sometimes it's even hard to find the seeds. Interesting. Yes, so they eat it and just leave the, the outer part. Yes, but with the popo, you would have to slice it into about four. We take out the, the seeds and you wash it. Also, that reminds me, make sure you wash everything you're about to put into the, the pen. Make sure you wash them before you introduce them there. Because you do not know what 
what they carry. So if you if you harvest the pawpaw, make sure you wash all of it before you cut them, take out the, the seeds, wash it again before you introduce it into the pens. They like to eat healthy too. <laughs> yeah, for this slow moving animal, then yeah, I enjoy it like that. <laughs> if you ask human beings, how could they be enjoying three squirrels a day? <laughs> uh, that was a reminder. How many times do you feed them? Morning, afternoon, evening, or evening? Oh, oh, so we feed them once a day. Once a day. There, there are certain farmers, and you see this on, on YouTube and other places. So, from my experience, feed snails every day. Feed them every day in the evening. And now, this is why I do not subscribe to the to the, um, the, the open uh, space or the greenhouse, greenhouse. snow farm. Because, yeah. look, if I put 10 propor in this pen, and then tomorrow I come and I realize that all the 10 propor is gone, to the extent that they haven't been made holes in the green, I mean, the outer part of, of, of the propor, it means that the feeding is not enough, enough for them. them. Okay. Now, the reason why you must feed them every day is, is because if you have 20 snails or let's say 200 snails, it is not all of them who felt like eating today. So if you do not, if so if you, if you starve them of food tomorrow, obviously the guys that did not eat yesterday would want to eat tomorrow or they would, they would want to eat today. So if there's no food, I mean, you're starving them. Yeah, that makes sense. Makes sense. And then there are, there are, there are ways snails try to save themselves when you put them in harsh conditions which um, we can also uh, discuss later so for me my advice is feed them every day around 3 to 4 p.m so that the food is always fresh for them when they start coming out around 6 or 7 p.m nice. if you put in the feed around uh, noon or in the morning the food will, will, will dry um, however there are times where they, they will consume some of the food and, and there will be leftovers you can keep it there because there are certain snails that would also want to come out in the afternoon to feed when everybody's asleep. I'm, I'm sure we will have those kind of <laughs> <kids>. <laughs> we will have those kids in our in our homes yeah. where you know they, they 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 get up at night to go get ice cream. So in the same way, we have snails that would want to wake up in the afternoon to come eat. So you can leave those leftovers for them. However, it is not all leftovers you leave in the pen, and I'll explain that. So, I mean, you can leave the leftovers from the previous day, yeah. not all of it, but a little of it. And then if you want to reintroduce it into the pen that same day, you'd have to just wash, wash it, it so that it gives it that um, Fresh, freshness. Right. right. You can even leave it in water for it to soak a little bit, maybe just about 20 minutes or 10 minutes so for it to soak a little bit. And then when you, when you reintroduce it, it feels fresh for the snails. Now, the reason why I said it's not all leftovers you leave in the pen is because there are certain leftovers that attract fruit flies and certain insects, lizards. There are certain fruits that if you leave it more than 24 hours, not even up to 24 hours. I mean, if you leave it more than eight hours, trust me, there are lizards that will do whatever it takes to get in there. There are mice that would re try to reduce the size of their body just to go in there and have a feed of that wow. because they haven't had that fruit in, <laughs> in God knows when. You, you understand? So things like orange. It is sweet. Almost every, every insect wants to have a bite of it. So you come to the farm early in the morning, you take out those delicate fruits and then throw it away. Okay. Things like the, the ripe pawpaw. If you introduce it there, you need to make sure you come here early and take it out and throw it away so that they don't go bad and then have worms also wanting to come and have a feast of it. You know, so that's it. That this is like interesting information we are having here right yes. now. So looking at the uh, pens, now you made mention of talking about the cost and everything. How many snails can fit in a particular pen? All right, so it depends. Um, the the hatchlings, the hatchlings, the very small snail uh, snails. Yeah. You can have about um, five thousand in this this same size 5, of pen. Okay. Yes, about yeah, five thousand. Okay. There are times where we've even had about ten thousand in this size of, 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 of pen and it's because of their size they are very small and then they at, at, at that stage they feed more on um, on leaves okay so uh, it's it's very beautiful and interesting when you put uh, so much um, contumery or uh, purple leaves and then when you come you only find the small small um, fibers in the in the leaf they eat everything, everything. so I mean for 
size the the size of, of a hatchling you can have about between let's say thousand to five thousand in one okay. pen. Okay. Now as they grow and then they 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 look like the size of, of my thumb, you'd want to reduce them to about a thousand in one pen or five hundred. Okay. Now um when they grew a little bit uh, bigger um to the maybe the fist of, of a child. Um, you would want to reduce them to about 200 yeah. or 100 to a pen. Okay. And then when they become very big or yeah. quite big, yeah. the, the size that you, you can sell, you would want to reduce them to about maybe 10, 50 in one pen. Interesting. Yes, and this is because uh, snails do not like competition. Um, if you keep too many snails in one pen, especially when their size is quite big, when they are growing and they want to eat more, if you keep them so many in one pen, they will feast on each other. Wow. Yes. So, so there's there's that part of snails where they can be ruthless. They can, they can, they they will start feeding on the shells of of the of, of the other. So, if you and that's again, that's why I want to have a relationship with my snails, because when you come early, you realize that there's a snail who has fallen asleep. On another snail, and he was he 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 fell asleep whilst whilst feeding on the shell of, of that snail. Oh. So when you see that, you realize that this particular pen, I need to do something. It means there's shortage of calcium. The thing is that the reason why we give them loamy soil again is because there's a lot of calcium content in there. Soil. So snails eat the soil, and again, because of relationship, for me, I handle their their feces. It doesn't smell. It's it's fresh from the the the, the fruits they ate um, the day before. Okay. So when I come to my farm, I can easily tell what my snails were fed the previous day by by looking at their feces. The color of the feces tell the feces tells me what they were fed. So sometimes you realize that, you realize that their feces are brown, and it tells you that this night this particular snail decided to eat soil. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Regardless of what what you fed him. Yeah. And then when you realize that they are they are Fitting on each other's shell, you realize that there's a lack of of um, calcium. Okay. I'd want to show you what happens to even even the pen, the space when there's lack of of calcium. Okay. So if you if you can get closer, so if you pay a close attention, you realize that if there's if there's a shortage of of calcium in the soil and also in the feeding you are giving them, you'd realize that they are feasting on the wall. Interesting. So they also cost that. Yes, so they can they can they can eat the whole wall and even start eating the blocks you used in in, in building it. Interesting. Yes. So that's what if so they're this eating it in a box or in a, a wooden structure. They can even if they're even eating cement and stuff. Maybe the wood you're eating. Oh, for them. <laughs> no, no, I don't, I don't, I don't think they will they will eat the wood. But you know, snails would would eat pretty much anything. So again, there's another tip. Okay. And the listeners need to pay me for it. <laughs> do not put do not put um what we call what in Ghana we refer to as takeaway. The takeaway pack. The pack the yes. white ones. Yes, yes, the white ones that people the check check people put the fried rice in it. So do not put any of that in your pants. If you if you do that, you realize that by morning they will start feasting on it and, exactly. and try to and try to eat it. And it's poisonous to them. So there are things that are poisonous, but they'll still go ahead to eat it to eat it. So things like cement, which is not too healthy for them, you realize that they are trying to eat it. So also, when you are building your pen, you make sure that there's the proportion of uh, cement to sand. You make sure that the cement is, is more so that you have a very strong wall. So they don't, they don't feast on the wall. Yes. So, I mean, when you see these signs that they are feasting on the wall, they are feasting on each other's shells, that is when you introduce calcium to, to their feeding and their soil. So sometimes what we do is that when we have the powder uh, form of or the oyster shells, uh, we mix it with the soil. Okay. So that they, they, they understand that we have uh, calcium and their water. Um, we put some of the powder in their water so that a uh, calcium they are the warm to say like that. Thing. <laughs> <laughs> no but matter what. So either they, either they take it from the soil, they take it from uh, the water, or they take it from what we have sprinkled on the on the feeding. Okay. So the main source of the calcium that you feed them is from the oyster. Shell. Yes, and it's also because the the relatively the amount of calcium in oyster shell is more than eggshells i know there are farmers who want to resort to eggshells so they go to the indomie sellers 
Get take the, the take the eggs, uh, wash them, and dry them. Anyway, and that would be like a cheaper option. A cheaper. Way. Well, well, honestly, if you if you go to the mill where they mill the oyster shells, it's very cheap. Cheap, oh, okay. It's okay. cheap. So, but maybe you know the eggshell is free because they don't sell out for free. But honestly, it is not. It's not that much. I think. I think the the first time I bought um, a bag, a whole fifty kg bag of. Um, Oyster shell, it was I think five CDs. Oh, that's for quite, one bag. Quite yes. It's quite quite cheap. cheap, yeah. Yes. So I mean it's not something you'd want to um uh, not 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 um infuse in, in your farm. Mm. Yeah, since you've been mentioned of calcium as very one one of the uh, very important things, it's mandatory, it's a requirement to make sure that the calcium mm. is needed, they get the calcium almost every day in their food mm -hmm. to make them stronger. Yeah. So let's look at the life cycle of the snail. At what point in time can a snail be sold um, when you are raising them? And also, you let's, let's go with that. The life cycle. At what point do you get that? Okay, this snail is good. Are you ready for me to sell on the market? Um, so sometimes it depends. There are people who want to get a snail the size of the fist of, of a newborn child, yeah. which um, there, there's a market for it. But uh, me, essentially, I, won't, I would like to sell my snails at a good price. So um, I'm looking about a year and a half. Then I'll, I'd want to sell them. Right. Yes. So that's why I said it takes it takes some time for you to recoup everything you have well, invested. In the snail farm. Yes. So by the time that one and a half years is, is due, you realize that they have also given you eggs to wait for another, you know, and that's, that's how you grow. Okay. 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 So at least at most one and a half years. Yes, you can you can you can sell them. But another thing, no matter what, you're going to have mortality. But we also we always do our projections against twenty percent mortality. So if you are doing anything more than twenty percent mortality on your farm, then you should be careful. There's something wrong, and which a lot of snow farmers are, are encountering right now. Okay. More than twenty percent uh, mortality. Wow. So at least at most what I should be around twenty percent. Around twenty percent. Try and reduce it. Yes. Uh, as much as possible. Mm. Okay. Okay. But I think uh, we've looked at almost um, everything. So huh, one other thing. When we were having the previous conversation, mm -hmm. so if you've not watched this, please go and check that video out before coming. We made mention that here we do the Angwapa. The Nigerians do the uh, what's the name of um, it? Akatina Majinata, which in Ghana we refer to as Pobre. Pobre, yes. Is it that the demand on the local market or in Ghana is the Angwapa that we want? Because you made mention stated that categorically that the Pobre ones grow much faster, they grow a little bit bigger and better. Is it that we don't, the demand on the market is not that much for that? Or how, how why, why do we mainly do the Angwapa here in Ghana? Okay, so I believe that if you are going into farming, you already know your target market. You know what the people love. Now, if you intend to sell locally, then which obviously, I mean, when it comes to snail, you can have the money you want locally. You don't even have to export. I mean, there, there are opportunities out there when you want to export. export yeah. But if you want to also focus locally, um, you'd want to focus on Enwapa, which is the Akatina, Akatina. Okay. Um, then, like I said, the Nigerians like the uh, Akatina Maginata. There's even Akatina Fulika. Fulika. The Akatina Fulika is the one that when it rains around your house, you see uh, some funny come snails around. coming around. Okay, okay. And a lot of people come, uh, other people with, with even that snail. Those snails. Yes. So, um, what the market in Ghana locally wants is the Nwapa, which is the African giant snail, and also scientifically called the Akatina Akatina. Okay. Yes. I, I may be moving forward. I'll show you samples on, on of, of, of these snails and um, how to differentiate them. Because yeah, how they look if like. you go out there to the markets, trust me, sometimes you might be enjoying some uh, snail at the chop bar or in your house, but it's probably a Katina Fulika. Interesting. 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 So I think we'll, we'll look at that, looking at the difference between them, um, the snails, mm. and maybe subsequently. Uh, after this conversation, look at that separately. You know the different types that we have, so that when you mm. go out there, you are purchasing some of the snows. You know that okay, these are the snows that are good for consumption. Because yes. I knew it's not all snows that are, that we consume. Basically, maybe in Ghana, mm. 
at times there are some of the scenarios you see around your house they look a little bit different some mm-hmm. um i don't know how to put it but yes they are, they are, they are i knew they are different from right. the snows and when i got to know like we rest those it was interesting to me because <laughs> initially the snow you don't want to have it rains just going to the bushes yes you go anywhere and pick them mm-hmm. out and mm-hmm. bring them home and stuff but yeah that so the, the the other thing i would want to add is that if you want to go into snow farming don't start your snow farming with snails to buy from the market. Interesting. If you want to know why, come and see me. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So reach out to him. <laughs> reach out to him. Yes. <laughs> like that's some of very important information. <laughs> Contact him for all your snow farming advice. Anything you want to know. I believe this video we can't cover everything for you. That's why I put their contacts out so you can reach out to them. Contact them. Other people who have been contacting me previously to get involved in snow farming. Some of them want to buy some of the snails and a whole lot of um, conversations around that i'll put your contact in this video in the comment section if you look at it i'll give it to you it will be in the description section of the video as well reach out to you for all your snow farming um, needs if you want some to buy some you want to start with a whole lot just um contact him and he'll be there to assist you with that yeah with that being said i think we'll, um this will end up in today's video or this video i believe you've left something about snow farming you've had some information about it if your snow business was failing at least if you learn something that can help revive it um, to uh, grow your business and make be successful at snow farming. This will close out today's video. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. Please subscribe. As I said, you saying the information is given. I'm supposed to pay you for that information. This is free. <laughs> the only thing you are just doing is just subscribing to the channel. Mm-hmm. So we all go together. Yeah. So subscribe, comment, share this video with your network, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace out.